I've heard a number of complaints about Title IX and how it works on this campus from my coworkers and from people who are not my coworkers. Pretty much any student, any student employee on campus, if you ask them one on one, they'll tell you there are a ton of issues with Title IX. Usually, a lot of people don't think that if they filed a Title IX, anything's going to happen. So oftentimes they, they worry more that they're gonna get in more trouble than anything for bringing it up. But I've always encouraged any employees with me to file if they feel harassed in any way, shape, or form. One incident was we had a patron come in. I was the one on shift, actually. My friend had not yet been hired by the building, but this per problem had still persisted. And they were sitting at the countertop in the game room doing some homework because it was quiet in there that day, it was a Sunday. And the patron was playing pool at the table right behind her. And they proceeded to hit her on purpose on the butt with the pool cue four separate times before she texted me to tell me what was going on. From where I was sitting, I couldn't even tell that he was doing it. It was reported to Title IX on the following Tuesday. She met with Title IX and the effect that they told her was you can just tell him to fuck off. I felt safer doing a closing shift that went to 1 a.m. than I did doing an opening shift that started at noon. Usually there aren't events going on in the building, so the building manager is checking in more frequently. A lot of times when I look at the shift report, it's midday to about 8 p.m. when the events happen. When you're working in a building where like, you're customer service focused and you don't have anywhere to go and your tasks can be limited, it gets really kind of questionable how we can focus on our work if we're worried more about our safety. We've had incidents where people have pretty much have dealt with one guy in particular who has been kind of creepy to them and has, you know, kind of crossed the line. I've seen this happen throughout the course of probably two years now. But I have one coworker in particular that has actually been touched by him and harassed multiple occasions. I prepare myself before going to work. Um, I do a mantra of I'll be okay, even though I know I'm not going to be okay. I take a lot of deep breaths, I put on a happy face, and then I get to work because it's my job. I, I need a job to sustain myself, but it's very hard when you just randomly see the individual that's bothering you and you know nothing can be done about it. I have coworkers that randomly come in just to see if I'm okay. When they should be doing stuff for like their classes or like, you know, for their personal life, but they don't care, they come in to make sure I'm okay. Or this person actually do, does bother my coworkers by doing the exact same thing, like, you know, trying to touch their hands or like trying to, criticize them or like, you know, just being overall rude to them. And I don't know why nothing's being done about it. They need to make sure that we're being taken care of when somebody comes and like actually tells them like somebody's touching me or like, you know, something of that sort, because there is a big difference between if someone's being creepy or somebody is touching you and I'm having the problem where somebody is touching me while I'm at work and I feel unsafe and they're not taking care of it. It's not fair. Nobody respects Title IX anymore. And that's mm -hmm. such a dangerous thing yeah. for everybody, for the safety of people. Because if you don't respect the body that is supposed to be saving you yeah. <laughs> or is supposed to be dishing out justice, yeah. then therefore assailants are like, I don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. And then the longer that I've been here and the more people I've met, it's incredible how many folks have dealt with this. Um, and it's, it's pretty appalling, the stories that you hear about nothing being done or, or a slap on the wrist for a perpetrator and that's it. And they can remain on campus and they can continue to be a part of, of athletics and, and everything. It's really surprising that what UNCA says that is their top priority is taking the back burner um, right now, in our student handbook, we do not have any punishments listed out for assailants. We do not have, we have, in our student code of conduct, the hearing process, like what will happen, like if you are accused or if you are accusing somebody, this is the hearing step process. 
and at the end it just says opinion will be reached justice will be reached like and that's all it says it's very very vague i know a lot of people on different campuses that within their student code of conduct they have an appendix at the end that says if you reach this level of sexual misconduct these are the things that can happen to you and so what that does if you can prove that it was more likely than not it lets the board or the hearing committee say you clearly violated these these are the punishments it gives a very uniform set out thing that can be put into practice you shouldn't have a reservation about telling someone what happened to you. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people who have been harassed or assaulted have reservations about going to Title IX now because they know that they're not going to be taken seriously. Um, and that's, that's, that's worst case scenario, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening.